Hi everyone, you may have heard this week about Captain Tom Moore, he turned 100 years old, having recently raised more than £20 million for the NHS. He's also reached the top of the charts, gone to number one with the song You'll Never Walk Alone. As some of you will know, I'm a great Liverpool fan, and so I love this song, it's sung before the start of every match at Anfield, you'll never walk alone. It's a song about never being alone, always having somebody with you. Surely God was the first to say, you'll never walk alone. For example, in the Old Testament, at the start of the book of Joshua, he says, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Perhaps most famously, at the end of Matthew chapter 28, he says to the disciples, Surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. These promises of God to be with us can bring us comfort and peace. But note, too, that they also strengthen us for tasks that God wants us to do. Joshua had just been told by God to lead the people of Israel into the promised land. And Jesus had just commissioned the disciples to make disciples of all nations. So, be encouraged as God says to us all, you'll never walk alone, I am with you. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you promise that to always be with us. Thank you that you promise that we will never walk alone because you are with us. Please help us to be ready to do your will. In Jesus' name. Amen. One of the privileges we have of gathering together as church is to pray together. And this morning I want to read you an amazing story that we have received this week. What would you do if the leader of a militant group invited you to visit them? This recently happened to a Christian in West Africa. Sani, not his real name, received a phone call from a man saying that he and four of his colleagues were aware of Sani's missionary work and they wanted Sani to come and meet with him. Meet with... Uh, can we start again? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just take it from Okay. One of the privileges we get as gathering as church is to pray together. And we're going to do that in a few moments. First of all, I want to share with you an amazing story that we have received in this last week. What would you do if the leader of a militant group invited you to visit? This recently happened to a Christian in West Africa. Sani, not his real name, received a phone call from a man saying that he and four of his friends were aware of Sani's missionary work and they wanted Sani to come and meet with them and tell them about Jesus. After talking on the phone for a few minutes, Sani realized that this man and his friends probably belonged to a militant group and that the invitation may well be a trap. He considered it too much of a risk and declined the invitation. But the man phoned again the next day, begging Sani to visit. To help persuade Sani, he related an account of their recent experiences. The man admitted that he and the four friends were leaders of a militant group, but recently these men had experienced something quite extraordinary. The five men had been leading their group of two and a half thousand men through the bush to a neighboring state to launch an attack when they were blocked by a vision of a man in brilliant white whose feet were on the ground yet whose head was in the sky. All five leaders and many of the larger group saw this vision. They did this, decided to try a different route the next day. Again, they were confronted by the same vision of a man in white. This happened five separate times. The men had little choice but to return to their camp. On arriving, each of the five leaders withdrew from the group, taking their prayer rugs to pray and reflect alone. He told Sani that while he was alone, a man in white approached him and greeted him. The man in white talked about what had recently happened and what was going on in the leader's head and even shared from the Bible. The leader was baffled and finally asked, 
Who are you? And how do you know these things? The man in white held out his hands, showing holes in his hands, and proclaimed, I am Jesus. I have come that you might have salvation and bring salvation to the others. The militant leader fell to his knees and accepted Jesus as his Lord and Saviour. Then the man in white walked away and disappeared into the bush. The newly converted leader got up and ran to tell his other leaders what had happened and discovered to his amazement that all five of them had met the same man at the same time. That's when they decided to invite Sani to visit them. After hearing this story and praying about and discussing the situation with his wife, Sani accepted their invitation to visit this militant group. He drove a fair way out of town, met the man who had phoned him and was taken by motorbike to the camp. Early the next morning, Sani entered the camp to find two and a half thousand militants assembled waiting to hear him speak. Sani is a gifted preacher, but on this occasion, something prompted him simply to read the scriptures. The New Testament had already been translated into his language a few years earlier, so he could read from God's word to them in their own language. After reading four chapters from the book of James, Sani invited the men to accept Jesus And amazingly, all two and a half thousand men responded. Isn't that an incredible story? We know from our own experience, I've visited with uh, Open Doors um, and heard amazing testimonies of Jesus revealing himself in visions and dreams to people. So this morning, I want us just to pray together for that amazing experience to be replicated again and again, particularly as we pray for Muslims around the world who are fasting and praying and seeking God that they may find Jesus. Let us pray together. Father, we pray today for the hundreds of millions of Muslims across the world observing Ramadan. We pray that you will bless them and that you will reveal your love and yourself to them. We pray that they will discover in you that they are loved that you have done for them something they could never do for themselves lord we pray that you multiply these amazing occurrences of dreams and visions we pray especially for our brothers and sisters who are persecuted in different lands across the world we pray that they will know the lord's presence comfort and spiritual protection We pray for our brothers and sisters who come from very different backgrounds, who have come to faith in you, Jesus. They often face opposition, physical danger, pressure to renounce their newfound faith. We pray that your presence will encourage their hearts. We pray for courageous believers who will be reaching out to their families and friends and neighbours at this time. We pray, Lord, as they share their faith, you will give them the words to say And we pray that they will be able to show your love. And we pray for secret believers who live in difficult places where they have to keep their faith a secret and will face increased scrutiny at this time. We pray for wisdom and discernment that they may know what is the right thing to do. Lord, we thank you that across our world you are moving in amazing ways. We know that we are living in difficult days. So we pray for our world and we pray that your kingdom will come and that your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for ourselves, Lord, that as we draw near to you, you would strengthen us and comfort us. We pray especially for those who have been bereaved in recent days. Lord, will you come and Be with them, be their refuge and strength, just as you promise. Lord, we pray that in these days you would build your church and that you would help us to be a witness to your love, to your grace, your mercy and the hope that we have in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.